Good evening, and I, I want to welcome you to the last session of the Bluegrass Bible Conference for the year 2020. And I, I can't believe it's, it's, it's uh, already halfway through the year, and it's been so much that, is, that has gone on this year. And so let's, let's uh, get right into the lesson, because I think it, it's going to sum up all of the information that we've received this weekend, and, 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 and put it to bed, if, if you will, and, and say, you know what? We have a job to do in spite of what's going on. So let's look at the verse that, that's part of my, my homework assignment that Pastor Gray gave me. And, and we're coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. And it says, Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. I, I love, you know, what, what, lately I've been, I've been teaching a series in, in our church here in, in uh, Central Oregon at Mercy Fellowship. And, and it's called, Are You in Your Right Mind? And it's focusing on, and, and the, it focuses on the development of who we are in Christ, basically so that we can not only live in the Spirit, but also walk in the Spirit and, and live out this wonderful grace life. And I love how when we look at the apostles teaching to us and the letters and, and, and through the, the, the Holy Spirit, everything is always sealed up with peace. When we do our job, it's, it's, it's the blessing of peace. So let's dive into this. So my assignment is, is to go over be perfect. And Paul finishes out here 2 Corinthians the same way that he finishes out 1 Corinthians. So go back with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 21. We're going to read this verse and then we'll take a moment to pray. Look at what it says here. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 21. The salutation of me, Paul, with my own hand. If any man have not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be Anamathea, Maranatha. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Our gracious and wonderful Heavenly Father, one more time we, we come together, we focus our thoughts, and Lord, we thank you for this wonderful weekend that we've had, that how we've been able to open up your word, rightly divide it, and get the profit out of your word tonight, uh, to, over, excuse me, over this weekend, and, 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 and also tonight. And, and so Lord, I pray that as we dive into this last lesson, we know we'll have the help of the Holy Spirit so that that form of sound doctrine that's continuously being built up and worked upon in each and every one of our lives, I pray tonight that we would see your word. It would come alive and, and we would get the profit out of this last lesson. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You know, Paul ends that last chapter of, of, of 1 Corinthians, his first letter, with Anamathea, and, you know, and that's a curse. Paul says, you know what? If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. Maranatha. And, you know, it's like, you know what? If you don't want to hear the gospel of the grace of God, get out of the way. And, and, and allow what God has ordained in this dispensation for us to walk in, to have being in, to, to function in. You know, we're living in a, in a crazy, crazy time. Yet, the crazier it gets, 
it should make us all of that much more excited. And, and I, I want to see show you also how Paul's talking about the gospel and, and how he cups it together. Go with me to Galatians chapter 1 and verse 8 and 9. Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. That, you know, that is a heavy, heavy responsibility. And, and you know, what solidified it for me when I began to understand Scripture rightly divided and the book came alive, how Paul himself, you know, he received many revelations from God, as we know. And we see the letters written down and the instruction and the doctrine written down to, to the church, the body of Christ. And, and when we see what he says, but the we, you know, putting himself on the, if he comes back and he says, you know what? You know, I, I got something else. I, 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 I have a, another, another gospel to teach you. I have, I have another. He says, no, or an angel. And, and you know, there's many false religions today that that's how they've gotten their start. It's because an angel came down and gave them a specific message and twisted the Word of God. And we're warned about it. And he says, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. But then he, he goes a little bit farther and he says, and as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then ye have received, let him be accursed. So you know the folks here, they've received it. And Paul was was seeing their lives. He, he was seeing who they are. And he knows the situations that, that have occurred in the, in the Corinthian church and the Galatian church. And he says, now listen, if anybody else comes to you, teaches you another gospel than what I've taught you, let him be accursed. So again, let's, let's go back to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 13, that for most of us is just right in the next page because it's, it, it, it just uh, follows along here. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. And his first admonition is be perfect. And he's saying to them, grow up as a workman. You know, we all know what it says in 2 Timothy chapter chapter 2 and verse 15. It says, Study to shew thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hold fast to the gospel. Hold fast to what you've been taught. Grow up and, and, and be the effective workman that you should be. Look how he tells him in, in his last letter, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 16 again. Go back there. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13. He, he's closing out and he's saying, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quick you like men, be strong. So, you know, he's back here in, in, in 1 Corinthians, he says, watch. Be on guard. Know what you need to know as an effective workman so that when the bad stuff comes in, you know right away it's not from God. And you handle it correctly. You don't allow it to flourish, but you handle it in love 
and you handle it in charity. Because look what he says in verse 14. He says, let all your things be done with charity. So even when we correct somebody, the idea behind it is still done in love. And But he says, watch, stand. Be ready. Be on the offense. Be quick like men. Be ready to fight the good fight of faith. You, don't, you won't have to be told. You'll already be in that place to do what you got to do. And you're going to be strong. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 17. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Excuse me, chapter 3, verse 17. Again, this goes along with, with, with the lesson. It says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, it's been covered, and I'm, I'm, I, in it, over this weekend, talking about perfect here has nothing to do with the issue of sin. Because you and I, who are in grace, there is no issue of sin. What he's talking about there is you walking in maturity, and you're ready to do so that you can be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You take on the responsibility you have growth in your life with sound doctrine and it's built up in your soul. And you, you're ready to give an account. Look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 28. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 28. Colossians 128, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that ye may, may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many has not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and to all riches of the full assurance of, I love this, understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ. Again, acknowledging this dispensation, honoring the wisdom that's given to the Apostle Paul, the authority that's been so erroneously, it's, it's, criminal, it's, it's, it's a criminal act, how they negate the authority of the Apostle Paul, and that which was given to him for the church, the body of Christ, and, and he wants it to be worked out. He, he wants it to be felt so that they could do this. Look, look at verse 3. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now you and I also understand what Paul taught in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Is that at one time these things were hidden, but now... They've been revealed and, and they're open to us and we can partake and enjoy the wonderful blessing. Now, the second thing he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, he tells them to be of good comfort because they were suffering. But look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 beginning in verse 3. Look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, Blessed be God, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, whom comforted us in all our tribulation, that ye may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble 
by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. So, if the sufferings of Christ are abounding in us, and that's being worked out in us, we have the promise that the consolation, Christ will even take care of that. If we're willing to go through the suffering for taking a stand for the right gospel, taking a stand for a book that is complete, the King James Version, set apart, distinctive, God preserving His Word for you and I. And yeah, you're going to suffer for that. You're, you're going to have reproach. You're, you're going to have things said, done. But you know what? If you suffer for Christ, know that Christ will also take care of our consolation. He's going to take care of it. The reward is so much greater than the suffering of this present day. L let's look again at uh, uh, the next portion there of the scripture. It says, be of one mind because the Corinthians and, and the folks in the Corinthian church had struggles with them being so easily divided. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye speak all the same thing, and that there be no division among you, that ye may be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So you have the same mind, and, and we possess the mind of Christ, and the fulfillment of that is us taking what's written on the page and getting it deep down in our soul so that we can go through the process of having our minds renewed, and then when we come to the same decision... We're going to be on the same page. We're all going to be going in the same direction. And, and there's nothing that's going to separate us. There's nothing that's going to behoove us. There's, there's nothing that's going to come and attack. And, and you're going to be able to do what Apostle Paul tells us, to stand therefore ready to fight. Be quick like men. Get it together. You know what? Be of one mind so that there is no division among you. Look at what he says in, in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 2. He says, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife and vainglory, but in the loneliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man is also on the things of the others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now you and I also, we, we know that the, 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 the mind of the Lord, what, what He had, that He humbled Himself. He was willing to suffer and die and, and, and be willing to shed His blood on a cross, be willing to be placed in a lonely grave because He knew that if He did what they agreed to, He did it by faith, God would honor it. And the outcome for you and I, for all of the world and, and whosoever will, it, it, they'll be able to enjoy it. Go to Philippians chapter 3 and verse 16. Philippians 3.16, it says, Nevertheless, 
whereto we have already attained. Let us, all, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Paul's saying, look, be of one accord, be of one mind, have the same love, and walk the same. You know, an army can't be effective if every one of the soldiers and the generals are saying, you know what, I'm going to do what I think is the best, and I'm going to do it this way and that way, and, and they're over here doing their thing, and, and he's over here, and the generals are over there, and another general is over there. They're never going to accomplish anything because they're all going in different directions. But when their aim is sharp, when their aim is precise, and they put everything else aside, and they see themselves the same. Remember, all of us come to the cross the same way. We all have to acknowledge Christ and Him crucified and say, I am, you know, come to the place that you recognize that you're a sinner and the only answer for you and your sin that separates you from God is Christ and Him crucified. And if you accept that, function in that, and allow what I've taught you to be built up in you. You're all going the same way. You have the same mind. You have the same love. And you're all walking the same. You know, I, I love watching and hearing uh, the cadets and stuff when I, when, when I would be with my dad on the Air Force Base in, in Kansas, McConnell Air Force Base, and, and the recruits would come in for... for um, uh, for the different organizations and, and how they would have to march in sync and, and shout in sync and exercise. I mean, they moved like a, a weld oiled machine and they knew if they were out of sync, there was going to be a price to pay. And listen to me. It's the same way in the church of God. If we're not going all in the same direction, it is going to be a hindrance to us. If we don't see everybody the same and, and, and saying, you know what? I may not be at your level of understanding, your, your uh, level of growth, uh, growth. You know, I understand that I'm coming up on the shoulders of of men who have paid a hard price for me to be able to have the platform that I have and to be able to continue it. And I know if I do my job right, there's going to be somebody on my shoulders carrying the work on until the Lord returns. And, and you know what? We have to understand that. And we have to cherish one another. And, and we have to focus in the same direction. You know, if we're one accord, one mind, same love, and we're walking the same way, you know, there, there, there would, would be no division, no strife, nobody getting mad at so-and-so. You know, and, it, and it's some of the craziest things that so easily beset the people of God at times. You know, I may not have been in, in, in full understanding of right division, but I've been in the church a long time, and I've seen how the cycles come in, and, and, and I, you know, and how they would flow in and flow out, flow in and flow out, and, and depending on what was going on in society, they, they said, you know what, do this thing, and so that you can meet the society this way, and, and if you do this, and... But yet, we would all receive the same instructions. But the problem is, is that they were all being interpreted different. Because I could go in my church and go into another church of the same, uh, of, uh, uh, same rank and file and there would be a totally different direction, message, and function. I got in trouble one time with an older brother, dear man of God, and I said, you know what? 
Do you know why organizations, especially cults, thrive the way that they do? It's because they're very militant at what they do. Everybody knows how to talk the same language. Everybody knows how to move. When the general says to go this way, they go. They don't question it. And I tell you what, if we were preaching the same message in our pulpit Sunday after Sunday, and our movement was going in the same direction, we would be a force to reckon with. But we can't be a force if we're moving this way in every way. And the devil likes it when it's like that. And, and you know what? We cannot enjoy the benefit of being perfect, being of good comfort, being of one mind, because the benefit of all that is that you can live in peace. And, and they were, you know, they were definitely seeking to destroy. Craziest thing. They were, they, you know, in, in, when you look at 1 Corinthians, Paul's being attacked. And, and being attacked for these different things and, and, and for different reasons. But what we have is the example of him remaining faithful to that which was given to Him. And if we do the same thing, we'll enjoy the benefit too. Look at, look at Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. Romans 14 and verse 19. He says, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. And you know, and, and when you and you look at that, Paul puts the responsibility on every one of us to, to seek after peace. I love what it's look at verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that is in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of all men. You know, there, there's not going to be any division. You're going to be accepted in the Beloved, and amongst men there's going to be peace. There's going to be an acceptance. So let us therefore follow after the things that make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another. Look, you know what? If you have nothing to build somebody up with, please sit down and shut your mouth because you're not doing anything to edify and build up the church, the body of Christ. You know, I, I, I watch... And I see and, and how folks will will take after. Oh, you're 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 not seeing that correctly. Oh no no no. And and instead of sitting down and being Bereans and studying out and looking and coming together and opening up the word. You know, I'll use myself as, as an example. You know, I always say, you know, don't let Google be your answer. Let the Word of God. If you could sit down with me and we could have a reasonable conversation with the Word of God opened up in front of us and I could show you the words on the page and you can see them for yourself. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You know, the Thessalonians were, were a, a good, faithful bunch. You know, and, and you look at them and, and, it, and, 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 you, and you, 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 you know, you, you see them at the start of it. Paul's acknowledging. Look at, look at chapter 1. He says, remember, uh, verse 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, 
labor of love and patient and hope in the Lord Jesus in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and the Father. You know, he's saying, you know what? Hey. I'm remembering that. Don't allow things to separate that one mind going in the same direction because that's what the poor Thessalonians had to deal with. And and so look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 13. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that no one render evil for evil unto any man, but, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men, both within the household of faith and outside of the household. Let your conduct be the same. Understand that we all come the same way. And you know what? Not everybody's going to be on the same page. Everybody's level of growth, of course, is different. And when you come at it from that aspect of esteeming them highly in love for their work's sake, and, and be at peace amongst them, you know, look, look at the contrast of this. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 13. 1 Corinthians. Excuse me, chapter 16. Sorry. Forgive me. 16. You know, and, 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 I, and, I, and I read this earlier. Watch ye, stand fast, in faith, quick like men, quick you like men, be strong. And over here in verse 20 he says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love, for their work's sake, and be at peace amongst yourself. As I said a few moments ago, we have to recognize the shoulders that we're coming up upon, and we move in the same direction, still having the same mindset in growth. We're not all at the same place, and we need to guard not to become high-minded, especially of those of the household of faith. I mean, look at verse 14 again. He says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. When you look at that, you, you, you know, when you're looking at chapter, uh, verse 12, 13, and, 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 and 14 here, you know, you got the ones in leadership. You got the ones growing and and. and recognizing and esteeming and they're being at peace and then he says now we exhort you brother and warn them that so you're going to have folks that are going to be unruly you're going to have to comfort the feeble minded you're going to have to come and give strength to the weak and be patient toward all men and when we do that we're going to have peace we're going to have contentment. One last verse. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. 1 Timothy 2.2 2. For kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who would have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. What more a, 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 a scripture can we see what's going on 
all the chaos that's going on around in our country, in the United States of America, a country that at one time we were the model for the rest of the world, and we have lost so much, and, and, and we've had a fight to come back and, and to maintain. But yet the foe, you know, it says, four kings and their authority that ye may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. You know, I tell you what, my focus is not to take a side on what's going on in society. My focus is to provide an answer for all of society, and there's only one answer. It's to see all men saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. If that's not our focus, if we're not conducting ourselves in that way, folks, we're going to miss the opportunity of seeing others come to see because we have to be going contrary. We're not supposed to take up a banner of this side and that side. Because you know as well as I do, if you understand what the Apostle Paul's teaching throughout all of the books, if they don't have a renewed mind, if they're not functioning with a spirit that's been made alive by that quickening spirit of being in Christ, taking sides and, and fighting, you're not going to change that. The only way you're going to change somebody's mind is to get them saved. You're not going to change an abortionist's mind that it's wrong to to you know, commit abortions until you get them saved. He's going to look at you and he's going to shrug his shoulders. He don't care. He doesn't see. Nor the person that's going to have one. The only thing that's going to change their mind is that they come to the place that they know Christ and Him crucified believing in His death, burial, and resurrection. If we're not focused about that, you know, I've, I got dear friends and, and saints they are saying, you know what, I'm tired of, of the things that go on on the different platforms. I, I'm, I'm out, I'm, I'm not going to do anything. And, it, and it's rightly so, because they see things going on that they should not be seeing, especially among the brethren. Let's stay focused with the task that is at hand, to see all men saved and come unto the knowledge of of the truth. We need to conduct our lives as believers that will allow our peace even to those that are in authority that may not walk after Christ, but they can see the peace of God and the focus that the Apostle Paul wanted us to have of being in one mind. And so I want to sum it up with this statement. To be perfect is to understand what it means to be holy, to understand what it truly means to be good, it truly means to be as one, you truly understand what it means to be peaceful, you truly understand what it means to be sincere, you truly understand what it means to be blameless, because when you're doing all those things, you understand how to be pure. And not to allow yourself to be defiled and sucked into. But you be quick like men. So the challenge tonight is, you know what? Let's remember the task at hand. We need to be of one mind, going in the same direction, beating the same drum, holding fast to the profession of our faith. Father, 
we thank you for this wonderful weekend. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We, we thank you for the wonderful place and position we have in you. Lord, I, I thank you for this conference that we've had over this weekend. Lord, I thank you for all that's been accomplished in our hearts. The renewing that has gone on in our minds and in our souls so that it will affect our walk. And it will continue to help us to be strong in who we are in you. Knowing that we're called to fight a good fight of faith. Not to get sucked in. Not to live in fear. But enjoy the peace of God that passes all understanding. We can walk in peace. Help us to this end, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. God richly bless you. It's been a great privilege to bring this lesson to you. Amen. Just hit pause.